All right, welcome to Collecting Comics with Maggie with Tony Wolverstein of Tony's Comic Attic. And he started up his sales again. And so we're having our kind of pre-playoff talk to bring us back into season with our football because the end of the season is shaping up. And let's just say a certain team is looking like it's got a good spot in the playoffs. <laughs> Yes, yes, indeed. Who'd have thought it? Who would have thought it? How many times did I tell you, oh, no, they're not going to make it this year? <laughs> well, that's that's the thing, right? They Everybody's uh, looking at the Ravens like they're going to be the uh, the walk-in Super Bowl contenders. Um, I think the Browns are probably getting overlooked a little bit. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, it's, it's everybody's got to go through the Chiefs at the end of the day too and they're a tough team yeah but but the browns have beat the ravens i uh i i am so looking forward to this postseason there's no pressure since my team's out so i don't have to i don't have to be anxious about it i can just enjoy it and let whatever happens happens <sighs> I mean, it looks like we're going to be playing the Jaguars, which we've already beaten. So that's going to be a good, you know. That's yeah. Going to, that's going to be a Trevor, solid. Trevor Lawrence is, uh, has struggled in some big games. Um, I don't know. Uh, everybody, you know, talks him up like he's, you know, the next big quarterback. But he reminds me a little of uh, Herbert where, you know, he's, He's got the skills, but hasn't won the games yet. On the NFC side, Lions, my dark horse pick, looks like they got a chance. Yeah, they worry me a little bit too. I think if I were a Lions fan, I'd be, I'd be, uh, I'd be super concerned about them. They they they've beaten some good teams, but they've also taken some really head scratching losses. Um, that game against Dallas was crazy. I don't know if you saw that, but. Uh, uh, they ended up basically losing on a, uh, I think what most people perceive as a bad officiating call on a two point conversion. But uh, the fact that they that they got that far was uh, kind of questionable coaching on Dallas's side. I thought, um, I don't know, it's this is a very strange year. I mean, obviously San Francisco is the leading contender right now for 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 winning for being in the Super Bowl, but. Yeah, but they've shown they've shown that they're uh, they're mortal too, right? I mean, gosh, the Ravens beat them, the Bengals beat them. Um, did the Browns play the Niners this year? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's uh, yeah. Like I said, it's it's kind of a crazy uh, crazy season. All right, like so said, Super Bowl. like I always say, if the Browns win the Super Bowl, it's the end of the world. <laughs> but if the Lions win. You gotta wonder if it's the end of the world too, or, or worse. Might be the end of the universe, yeah, yeah. If it's the Lions and the Browns playing in the Super Bowl, we know it's the end of the world. Uh, I think uh, I think my my pick for the Super Bowl at this point in the season is uh, is probably the 49ers and the Ravens. I'm gonna go with the Ravens and the Lions. Mm. I, all these games will be good. I mean, there isn't a team. I think team out there right now that that hasn't shown some flaws or is struggling with some injuries in key positions or whatever. Um, so no matter who gets in, you know, they're, they're not a sure thing. So um, I'm excited. It'll be a lot of fun to watch. Well, all I can assure you this weekend is the Bengals have an easy game. <laughs> yeah, they should. That doesn't mean they're going to win it though. <laughs> I mean, it is the most meaningless game, Browns game of the season. Yep. Yep. Uh, it'd be nice to get a win so they don't go over their division this year, which uh, was obviously not not where you want to be. That really is what kept them out of the playoffs. If they'd have won one or two divisional games, they're, they're right up there. But uh, they couldn't manage it. So that's the way it goes. Well, well, let's let, let, let's go to the amazing internet NFL board, which I'm not going to show on screen. Which, as you can see here, is this amazing board. We can see that 
we can see that the Jaguars, Bills, and Colts look like they're they're the ones going in for the thing. I don't see much for the Colts. The Colts are still in the playoffs? My God. Yeah, they're in seventh place. Oh, boy. Well, then. Like I said, crazy year. I mean, the Texans and the Steelers are on the bubble. If if everything worked, if, if the Colts lose and the Bills lose, then the Texans and Steelers win, and then we might we might have some movement. But it's like, yeah, the Steelers uh they should win because Baltimore's going to rest their their starters, so they're going to have the same kind of game that Cincinnati is, where they're playing a team doesn't have anything to play for. Um, but yeah, they need a ton of help. So not sure that's going to happen. But if the they bills, make obviously, game. I mean, I'm rooting for the bills because, you know, three time AFC <laughs> winner, three time Super Bowl loser. Yeah. Yeah. And Josh Allen put it, put his name up there with Herbert and, uh, and Trevor Lawrence, right? He's, he's a great quarterback and everybody's ready and knowing him, the, you know, future Hall of Famer and all that, but uh, he hasn't won any big games yet. Yeah. Then we got the Jaguars. Yeah. They can get knocked out, too, by oh, yeah. by them in the South, so they can get knocked out by the Colts. Yeah, that's that's, that's why I'm excited about this postseason. It's just uh, there's it's hard to predict what's going to happen. Uh, there could be some really crazy stuff going on. Somebody, you know, has a key injury or a team goes on a, a little run, and, man, Oh, it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, and and all we got left is the Buccaneers and the Green Bay's playing for a spot in the NFC. Uh, with the Saints, Seahawks, Vikings, and Falcons. You know, it's like with a whole bunch of guys. It, it you know basically the Rams are in sixth, the Eagles are in fifth, the Lions. So I mean, spot four hasn't been determined yet, but that's that's probably going to be the Buccaneers. But you know, but. You know, any there there's still two teams in the South that might possibly get a chance. Depends on how they do. So we're looking at a we're looking at an interesting playoff. Yep, yep. I'm excited. All right, let's talk some comics now because this is about selling comic books, not just about football. Even though you've been hankering to talk about football since probably the last time we talked. Yep, yep. All right, I got a shout out. Uh, a friend of mine let me uh, borrow. Uh, I don't typically buy new comic books, um, but a friend of mine does, and he's pretty big into uh, the independence. And I read uh, Traveling to Mars. Um, I think the first, uh, I don't know, seven or eight issues of that. Um, good stuff. Really enjoyed it. Um, it's been been an entertaining uh, series so far. Oh, awesome. Let me share my screen. Yeah. All right. We kick it off with... Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. <clears throat> we kick it off with Raw High Kids. So you had a whole bunch of Raw High Kids... And I picked this one because it looks like Jonah Hex is attacking the raw high kid. It really does. I thought that guy looked familiar. I mean, it's wrong with Confederates, you know, Jonah Hex. But I just thought that was a cool homage to Jonah Hex on a Marvel cover. Yep. Yeah, I got a mess of uh, low-grade uh, low Westerns. And then throwing in another Western that I just saw that I just couldn't pass up. These are gorgeous painted covers from Zane Gregg Stories of the West. There were there were like three of them, all gorgeous. I couldn't pick which one. I, I, I still debating if I picked the right one. You know, it was like I, I didn't want to show all of them, but I wanted to show all of them. You, you know what I mean? If you're yeah. looking for something you want to put on your wall that will add pizzazz, these will add pizzazz because they're hand painted. You can't you don't get hand painted covers that often. I always wonder where the originals to some of these ended up. I mean, wouldn't that be cool to own some of these? Uh, you know, the the uh, I assume it's some kind of an original painting. Yeah, I that would be cool. 
So this, I think, is Golden Age. So just letting you know, there's Golden Age in here, the Gumps. It looks about the size. It's 10 cents. Yep, seen better days. I, You had a couple of war comics, and I decided to pick this one out of the war comic because this is 1950s war comics. They had stopped talking about World War II and more talked about Korea. This is obviously the Battle of 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 Chozon River where the Marines fought heroically against the the mass Chinese waves. It was there there's a famous Chinese movie that 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 reenacted it that was really cool about it. Hmm. Then you had a lot of sci-fi DC and ACG and all those others. Yeah. And Obviously, Adam Strange, always a good, fun read. And any of the Mystery Space, any of the science books, definitely worth a pickup if you're looking for something just to read that's offbeat, one-time tale story. The older stuff is a little bit more fun than the later stuff. And the stuff that look, that looks Silver Age and kind of looks almost Golden Age, that's the really good stuff because that's before code. Yeah, let's talk for a second about uh, Adam Strange and those jetpacks on his back. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> he must have asbestos pants on. That's got to hurt. Oh, yeah. He always has his jet pack on. <laughs> he dies of, of asbestos cancer or something. It's probably <laughs> some amazing metal or some amazing fabric on, on that planet that protects his, his butt behind from those jet packs. <laughs> This is so this is early Marvel journey into the mystery um sagas that really ancient the you you don't get a chance very often to see one of the monster books from that era. And I was like, this is definitely if you're collecting monster books and this is the Marvel, this is part of that Marvel line of monster books, definitely worth getting to pick up. Rarely get to see it. And you never know, the spider might come back because Groot from one of from one of these journey the mysteries came back. <laughs> yep, those are those are some uh some entertaining uh entertaining covers. I'm getting really close on my tales to astonish run um in um in the ballpark for the journey into mysteries and the uh um tales of uh suspense. So very uh very fun series to get a hold of. It's uh starts to get all expensive towards the old ones, but it's it's uh they're they're cool books. Then we got I can't tell what era this is. Does this look golden? Does this look like it's a large book? It's it's silver, but it's a reprint of a golden. Okay. I I I I was like, this doesn't look golden, but the art is golden. Yeah. Oh, it's it, it it's just a reprint. Sorry, worth it's worth picking up if it's like for ten bucks, five bucks because the, you get to read those old golden age stories and they're just crazy. Yep. And then we get to the Batman's, and here here's the first Batman cover. Don't shoot, you know, Batman surrounded by cops. Great Batman cover. Great, get, great selection of Batman. And then we have Punisher and Spider Man fighting it out, one for the longest long gangs, early Punisher appearance. Mm -hmm. Definitely one that might disappear with my purchasing power because I love those early Punisher appearances when he was just totally crazy. Yeah, yep. Yeah, a lot of Ross Andrew art. Uh, this is one I remember getting uh, in a uh, subscription when I was uh, was that when I was a teenager, uh, coming in the the flat mailers, the uh, craft paper, uh, protective. It's amazing those things. Oh, I had mine came in plastic bags. Yeah, the, this was this was a little bit before then. Um, they came in basically a brown paper wrapper, like uh, like grocery sacks, um, and it, it's it amazed me how many of them arrived. In good condition. Every now and then, the mailman would kind of fold fold one up in half to you know tuck it in or whatever. But um, they almost never got pulverized or crushed, or the spine 
torn up too badly and I, I i still can't figure that out i can't even imagine trying to send something like that now <laughs> can't even get a letter from one place to another without it getting torn in half and then just some weird war because i love weird war and weird war sells well so this 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 guys get fast because you need to be fast because these go fast yeah yeah i probably should have put a sticky note over the swastika sometimes facebook will uh lock out a post that uh that has uh swastika is evident and that they have some kind of algorithm and then another cool Neil Ad is that a Neil Adams cover I think it's a Carmine Infantino um, no it's Carmine yeah that's a nice cover I mean and it, it's a nice cover definitely one that it's got blockbuster fighting Batman and almost trying to kill Robin <laughs> and then some more weird war yeah, they had some crazy, crazy looking covers. And then just some more Batman. I think this is a Neil Adams cover. Not Neil Adams, um Danny O'Neill. Yeah, I have no idea about this one. And then just some more great 70s, early 80s Batman. Some great, you know, just great cover. Great if you're looking to pick up a good Batman read. These are all good Batman reads. Then you had a whole pile of the X-Men. I couldn't pick out which one, but I remember this cover. And this is the battle between Storm and Rogue, I believe. Uh, no, okay. Definitely yeah. a good selection of X-Men for this week. They should sell well. And then you had a ton, and a ton of Tarzan. Now, personally, I'm not a big Tarzan. I've had Tarzans in my collections off and on. And I always like say I'm going to pick up some Tarzan and read some Tarzan, but I never could get into Tarzan. But is Tarzan a good seller? Um, yeah. I mean, it's not a big money book by any stretch of the imagination. There aren't a lot of keys or anything like that. And it's a little like Conan, you know, you got to, uh, very similar stories and, um, uh, you know, the artists that they had on him was, uh, were, were, were pretty good. This is, I think, uh, Kubert. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, they're, they're a good series to pick up because they can be had relatively inexpensively. I have a rather large collection of them that I'm trying to get them out there, but don't want to put them all out at one time because it gets, you know, it's it's hard to sell that way. Yeah. And then the oddity of the week, the adventures of the big boy. The picture's <laughs> kind of blurry, but. Oh, that was a terrible picture. I wonder what I did there. Yeah. I think we all had a little bit of time in Frisch's where we got one of these. I mean, I remember these magazines when I was a kid and I got them from the big boy and you were like, you read them and they were fun to read. They had little puzzles in them and stuff. You did the little puzzles and stuff. And so, I mean, it's cute to see, but will it sell? I don't know. I, I, I haven't tried many. I don't really I, I collect them when I get them. I don't go out of my way to get them. I don't really have any interest in paying a lot of money for them but sometimes i pick them up in piles of things and i'll just put them aside and, um yeah i got a handful of them now i think i'm more interested in the ones that are much older than uh than the ones from the 80s is this from the 80s i don't remember about this one i didn't look at it that closely i think i had two of them well, anyways, that was the end of that's the end of the list of comics that I wanted to feature. So, I have... so let's. All right, so. Anyways, that's the end of the sale. Let's take one last look at everything and then let's call it a day, Tony. All right. Sounds good, Maggie. Good luck to your Browns this weekend. And uh, uh I'm trying to expect the Browns to win this weekend, to be matter of frank. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be matter of frank. If the Browns if the Browns are going to lose to the Ravens, they may, they might win the first round, but they're going to lose to the to the Ravens in the next round. Well, hopefully they do some damage to them in the meantime. 
All right. All right. Good talking with you. I'll catch you in uh, another week or two. Yeah. Catch me in another week or two. All right. Sounds great. We'll see you later. See you later. Well, that was their interview with Tony as I try to find out how to stop this.